Welcome to the official Global RPH YouTube channel. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to stay updated with our latest videos. In 2025, the hypertension threshold was redefined to 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury, sparking debate. This shift aims for early intervention, especially for high-risk individuals, but raises concerns about overdiagnosis. Why the change? Evidence shows even modest blood pressure increases elevate cardiovascular risk. Early intervention could prevent heart disease, stroke, and kidney damage. The SPRINT trial significantly influenced the new guidelines. It demonstrated that targeting lower blood pressure reduces cardiovascular events by 27%, emphasizing the need for early treatment. Modest blood pressure increases can lead to significant cardiovascular risks. The new guidelines aim to mitigate these risks by lowering treatment thresholds. The 2025 guidelines contrast with the 2017 ACC, HA, and ESH guidelines. They introduce a detailed classification system, non-elevated, elevated, and hypertension. Updated blood pressure classifications, non-elevated, less than 120 over 70. Optimal cardiovascular health, no pharmacological treatment needed. Elevated, 120 to 139 over 70 to 89, a critical category for considering treatment based on cardiovascular risk. Hypertension greater than 140 over 90. Treatment is typically indicated for these patients, especially those at high cardiovascular risk. These updates aim to identify individuals at risk of hypertension early, especially those who are not yet classified as hypertensive. The new classification system helps tailor treatment focusing on early intervention for high-risk individuals, unlike previous guidelines. The new threshold is expected to increase hypertension prevalence, especially among younger adults. This raises concerns about overdiagnosis and unnecessary treatment. While more individuals may be diagnosed, many may not have significant comorbidities, questioning the necessity of aggressive treatment. The 2025 guidelines introduce refined categories, non-elevated, elevated, and hypertension. These classifications guide individualized treatment plans. By identifying individuals at risk early, the new system aims to prevent progression to hypertension through personalized care. Accurate blood pressure measurement is crucial. The guidelines emphasize out-of-office monitoring with ABPM, ambulatory BP monitoring, and HBPM, home blood pressure monitoring, offering reliable cardiovascular risk assessments. ABPM is preferred for diagnosis, while HBPM is recommended for ongoing monitoring, helping to identify conditions like white coat hypertension. The 130 over 80 threshold has sparked debates about overdiagnosis and overtreatment. Critics argue it may lead to unnecessary psychological and financial burdens. The SPRINT trial, while influential, faces criticism for its design. Some suggest benefits of aggressive treatment may be overstated, especially for low-risk individuals. Implementing these guidelines in primary care is challenging. Time constraints and global disparities complicate adoption, especially in resource-limited settings. Despite challenges, the guidelines aim to improve outcomes by providing clearer guidance for hypertension management, focusing on early intervention and personalized care. Recap. We've explored the rationale, evidence, and implications of the 2025 guidelines. Early intervention and personalized care are key to preventing cardiovascular complications. Takeaway. By understanding and applying these guidelines, you can enhance patient outcomes and contribute to better hypertension management globally. Ultimately, these guidelines aim to improve patient outcomes by providing clearer guidance for hypertension management. As research continues to evolve, the debate surrounding the 130 over 80 threshold will likely shape future updates, ensuring that treatment approaches remain evidence-based and clinically relevant. Thank you for watching the Global RPH YouTube channel. Subscribe for more insights into evolving medical guidelines and their impact on healthcare practices.